Administrator Marty D'Ambrose and Captain Scott Alberti with the Sheriff's Office. Um, I'll do a brief statement and then have some questions after. Second, okay. uh, about 116 Saturday, April 1st, uh, ERPD officer Tim Newcomb received a call regarding a burglary in progress at the Vision Kia 201 East Linden Avenue. Both Officer Newcomb and Munner County Sheriff's deputies responded to the call. Officer Newcomb and deputies arrived simultaneously and encountered several suspects. One suspect fell out on foot and was apprehended by a deputy. The other five suspects jumped into two separate vehicles and started to flee the area. Officer Newcomb had exited his patrol car and was subsequently hit by one of the vehicles that was fleeing. That vehicle also struck Officer Newcomb's patrol car as it was leaving the parking lot. Uh, while on the ground and after composing himself, Officer Newcomb was able to call on his portable radio that he was struck by the vehicle. Officer Newcomb continued his efforts to apprehend the suspects. The RPD officers, uh, Alessia Amati and Sergeant Lerdner, were eventually able to assist with the incident, but only after they had finished dealing with a DWI drug arrest that was initiated by Officer Newcomb earlier in that evening. Both of these vehicles were determined to be stolen. The 2020 Kia Sportage was actually at the dealership to be repaired after being recently stolen and recovered out of a rendezvous. That vehicle fled down West Linden and crashed at the intersection of 441. The second stolen vehicle was a Kia Soul, which was reported stolen to RPD on March 31st. That vehicle fled on South Washington, turned on to West Commercial, and was unable to navigate the turn onto Main Street, the car jumped the curbing and subsequently struck the Technoplex building at 300 Main Street. We're grateful to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office for their help, as well as our own uh, officers for their immediate arrest and processing of all the suspects who appear to, between, to be between the ages of 13 and 15. Officer Newcomb was evaluated at Rochester General and was released. It appears that he did not occur any extensive in injuries. Um, there are six suspects. All of them appear to be residents of the city of Rochester. Four have been issued appearance tickets. One was released from the hospital before we were able to issue an appearance ticket. And the sixth suspect is unknown at this time. Uh, the names of the suspects are not being released due to their age. And I'll, I'll end this by saying I couldn't be prouder of our officers and the way they responded uh, and the deputies and the way we collaborate together and are able to finish these jobs. Um, I'll now give it up to uh, Captain Alberti to see if he has a name. Thank you. Uh, I'm very thankful no one was seriously injured during this incident. Um, all folks were treated and released from the hospital that night. Um, and just through great communication and collaboration, working with our partner law enforcement agencies, we're able to make arrests for these incidents and hold people accountable. Thank you. Thanks. Captain, I mean, um, Officer Alberti, I'm sorry, I didn't get your uh, first name. And Scott, Scott Alberti, Captain with the Sheriff's Captain. Office. Uh, all right. Any questions? Yes, yeah. sir. How many, how many still alive? One. 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 Thanks for clarifying uh, about the stolen cars. But uh, is it fair to say they arrived in one stolen car and stole another? Um, yes. They arrived in two stolen cars. One stolen car was left there. They left in a, another stolen car. So they continued in one stolen car that they came in. Uh, the other stolen car was left at that scene, and they had stolen another car. So there's three stolen cars involved. One was left at the scene at Kia. The one that was left at the scene, what kind of make and model was that car? That was also a Kia. I'm not sure the make, the model, though. And where was that one stolen from? I'm not sure. And an officer could have been killed um, in this situation. And on behalf of law enforcement, what do you have to say, you know, in regards to just the lives in these cars that have not been able to take them? Well, I'm, I just, I feel... Um, I feel blessed that, you know, we're not wearing a band across this today because, you know, seeing, I've seen the video at Kia where we can't release it at this point, but, you know, without Officer Newcomb's agility uh, to avoid uh, as much injury as he could have gotten, uh, it could have been a very serious injury. Where was he out for? He's back to work. Okay. 
Without getting graphic, what part of his body was hit? Leg, arm? Uh, so, it, as I mentioned earlier, the patrol cars uh, came in simultaneously at both exits. One of the fleeing vehicles went around the back of the building. Uh, around the back of the building also was another car that they had smashed windows out so that alarm was going off. Uh, Officer Newcomb exited his patrol car after kind of blocking off the exit and was uh, going to assess that you know, alarmed car. Um, so as he came around the corner, the vehicle was accelerating. He was able to see it. Uh, he got his hands up on the hood of the car and kind of jumped up and he was kind of tossed aside from the passenger side. Obviously a great police work, but kind of concerning to you maybe is that they're going to pick us and they're right back out and do it again. I mean, I know you say this over and over, but what are right. your thoughts on that? I mean, he put his life on the line and they got pickets. Right. right. Well, you know, it, it's unfortunate we got to work within the parameters that were given. Um, I have talked to probation and they are um, very, uh, they're going to do as best they can to um, get whatever charges and hold them accountable the, as best they can, you know, within what they can do. Now, we, we've seen these, um, you know, this rash of car thefts with, with this brand. Is this the first one that they've actually hit the dealership? I can't recall. I can't speak too much to other dealerships. Um, you know, after speaking with Vision, um, they have told me that there's certain models, certain years that are that are a focus of this these groups. Um, Kia has made some modifications to newer models, so um, they're not being stolen. Uh, you know, this group actually broke out windows of four vehicles, two of which they entered but couldn't steal because they had you know different measures on it to, that they couldn't start the car. Maybe you want to give ideas of how do they start these cars up? Is it a hot wire? Do they take the keys? Do they, how do they do this? Maybe, maybe you don't want to say to give people ideas. Yeah, I'm not sure. I just know that every vehicle that's stolen has uh, the steering column broken off. Um, what they do after that, I'm, I'm not sure. We're talking 1.30 in the morning. We have 13 to 15-year-olds. When they were released to their parents, what was told to their parents? Well, so um, my officers were pretty tied up. That, that might have been... Um, something that was done by the sheriff's office. I, I would just say that, um, you know, it, it's it's kind of becoming an epidemic that these kids are kind of allowed to just kind of roam around. Um, it's it's a tough situation. I know you know family lives are tough and it's tough to keep track of your kids. But you know there, there's a lot of victims out there right now, and you know at some point. The victims are going to have to speak up and, you know, say it's enough. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Uh, so if you guys want any additional, like, footage, we have a little bit of damage to our, our patrol car, uh, 904, which is outside, and then where, where they hit tech, Techniplex, if you want to, I could show you where that is also. Okay. So if you go down uh, West Commercial to the end here, mm -hmm.